I welcome you to my channel. I want to go through this topic, uh, basically for researchers, authors, who have one or two concerns about how they could increase their citation. Basically, the essence of your publication is to make impacts academic-wise a weight of knowledge, you're putting them all in publications so that people will have access to them, read them, after reading them for possible citations and others. Just like the popular say in the academics, you either publish or you perish. I want to quickly go through how, as individual so we could improve our citations. This is on the premise that you have built your profile already as an author, you have published journal articles before and you have one or two citations so you do not have at all but now your, your concern is how can I even gain more citations or increase my citations. You have published your citation that, that's perfect you have it printed that's perfect you obviously know that you need citation from your publication but before you can have citations at least you will need readership people must have access to your publications before they can cite you and if they must have access to your publication, that means that your publication must be made available to them. That means that you can't make your publication private and be expecting good number of citations to come from them. Now, the question is, how can readers enjoy seamless access to your publication if you fail to push those publications online for them? Also, how will they, or how can you even push your online applications with your inconsistent name arrangement. Today, you are Usman Godfrey Taiwo. In another article, you name yourself T.G. Usman. In another article, you name yourself U. Godfrey T. All belonging to the same author. This is pretty unprofessional and in a way it's making you lose some citations. So we just want to look at basically 10 proven ways that will help you to increase your citation. Number one on the list is identifying keywords and key phrases in your article. After you've identified them, you are the author, you know those words, those phrases that are central to your topic, central to your publication, those words they are expected to be consistently used in your abstract. They are expected to be consistently used in your manuscript generally. They are expected to be uh, contained in your title. The essence of this is Google Crawler will be able to crawl through search engines and pick your article in if there is a query around those keywords. Number two is that you should say yourself, what is the essence of you writing articles and keeping your articles in your column in terms of hard copy? You have it published and printed, and you have it all in a Ghana must go, kept in your drawer. How many people have access to your drawer? How many people will be able to read it from your drawer? And if people do not have access to reading your articles, how then can they cite you? It is from number of readers, you'll be able to have number of people that will cite, you, cite it. In a situation where you publish your article, you have it printed, you have it kept in your drawer. And inside your drawer, only your family members have access to it. So you can only be expecting citation from those family members who have access to your articles. And obviously, some of them are not even have interest in it. Rather than you having the same journal articles available, making it available in soft copy and putting it online for the entire world to have access to, and from there, you'll be able to have a good number of citations from them. And how you can do this is join social networking sites, upload your publications on them. You can create and grow engagement from your publications. Build discussion around your topic. For instance, if your topic has to do with 2015 general election in Nigeria and the consequences of this, 
to national development, generate discussion around this topic, and point people to XYZ pages in your journal article where certain problems were discussed and the certain solutions were discussed. In this sense, your readers will enjoy the build up to you making reference to your article. And with that, you are generating engagement. Number three is using a unique name in all your publications. You are not Bilo Bala today, and in tomorrow's article, you turn to BB. In another article, you turn to Bilo. In another article, you turn to Bala B. Be consistent and let this be all through your publication career. If you do this, you make citations very easy to be connected to you. You really don't need changing of arrangement of your name. And it, it is understandable that some publishers can be funny sometimes. You have to be consistent about checking what they have changed your name to be when they are giving you your manuscripts, the first review stage and all that, to very sure that you want your name arranged the way they have it arranged. If there are any alterations, you tell let them know. And let this let this one be permanent all through your publishing career to avoid being just changed. Number five is always and be able to make your publications open access. Ensure free access to your publications, considering the fact that there are tens of thousands of publications that are flying online. So in a situation where you now decide that, oh, you have published something so spectacular that you don't want it to be open access. Oh, that means that the citations that may possibly come from them, from the publication, will definitely be limited. That's number five. Number six is that you should turn your active email address to a free tool in promoting your publications. We all do have an email address. So there are signature feature in every email address. If it is Google, G I mean, if it is Gmail, if it is Yahoo Mail, Hotmail, all of, all of them, they, they have signature. So when a message comes in, you could have a feedback, autoresponder. In the autoresponder, have certain portion indented with updates of your publications. If you are sending a message out, you could do the same thing. In this sense, your email contacts, they get notified of your journal articles. That's what I mean by you carrying your work, selling your market yourself. So this tool is very excellent, especially when you have all your journal articles all congregated, like combined, uploaded on a particular URL, and you are simply directing people there. This could be your research gates profile or academia profile or excellently where it was as well be your personal website so when people go there they have access to the pool of all your journal articles if anybody sends you a message they receive a feedback and on the, from the feedback they see a link directing them to your website number seven point is make your publications accessible online this is very Paramount, especially for people that are published with local publishers. The local publishers don't usually produce the soft copies of your articles. Some of them that manage to do that, they will give you a domain link where you have access to your journal articles, and the link will be broken in a short period of time. Recently, I, I was working with one at Permit, and the link he gave me to where I could have the journal article downloaded was active for just a few weeks. After that, I went back there when I actually needed to work on it. The, li the link is not available and all that, which implies that they have changed the URL. And that is very common with local publishers. Some will not even give you access to having it online. That is, if that is even if they have it online themselves. They only print it, and after printing, they give you the hard copy. What you can do in this sense is that you scan the document to a readable format that is editable format, a format that you can copy paste. I'm not talking about picture here, pictorial format. I'm not talking about that. The scanner that will scan your document to readable version, editable version, where people can easily copy and paste. It makes it easier for Google Crawler, especially while you're optimizing your content and all that. So that's number six. Number seven is you ensure usage of usage of standard institutional email 
and this implies that when you are coming up with your journal article, you don't have to be using uh, Bellobala at gmail.com at yahoo.com. It's an unprofessional one. And number two, it wouldn't help you in a way of having an affiliation to an institution, especially when you are doing your Google profiling. It is expected that you should be affiliated to an institution. And that helps you in a way to have your citations attributed to you if you are under a particular institution rather than you not being under any institution. So if you use your institutional email address, it helps you connect to a particular institution so your citations are easily traceable. Number nine is that to every journal, there are what is called digital object identifier. There are digital object identifier to every journal article. As you are making a publication, there is an identifier. This identifier is unique to your article. It is usually provided by the publishers. But obviously, a local publisher wouldn't be able to get you that. And some international publishers might not still be able to get that. But it's the thing you can do yourself. That's number one. Number two is that as an author, you, you're supposed to have an ID. So under this ID, you have all your journal articles. Obviously, your journal articles definitely will have been connected to a DOI. What I mean by this is this. As an individual, you have an ID of your own. So you have made, you have published 20 articles. Those 20 articles are supposed to, are expected to have 20 DOIs. One for each of the articles. So when you build your online CV, when you build your online CV, either you use OC or you use Research ID, you have an ID on to yourself. So when you get there, you'll be able to link all your, just pull, pull all your journal articles through your DOI, pull all of them together. This helps in increasing your citations because all your articles are pulled to one source and people can have access to every of your publications as just as interest. The last one is that there is a popular saying that one shall chase 2,000, but two shall chase 10,000. Total authoring, especially with international authors, is one of the best ways to increase your citation. What I mean by this is this. In a situation where you are making publications of a journal article and you are is a single author article, every effort to, to have your citation increase is to be made by you and you alone because there are no other authors connected to the journal article. So no, the benefits is coming to no other person but only you. But in a situation where you have like two or three people with you that co-author with you, as you are making effort at promoting your journal articles, they are also making the same effort. The benefit of having team authoring is that if you are all promotion minded, you'll be able to get larger number of citations. And remember, citations are attributed to all authors and not and not to a single author. Thank you. If you have any other observation, maybe you have any other point you think we could look at in increasing our citation, please drop in the comment section below. And please like, follow and comment. Thank you.